Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have David Seekel. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, David. Hi, how are you guys? We're good. How are you? I'm doing well. Can't complain. It's beautiful out today. Oh, so yeah. I'm up here in backyard, and I'm just uh, happy to be here with you guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, that's awesome. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit about you. Kind of like, what do you do? So I'm a licensed realtor um, in Grand Rapids. Um, so I service the West side and Lake shore, um, been doing it for been licensed since November, but I've been in real estate for over a year now. I was doing some social media and marketing for an agent, uh, here in, on the West side and, um, was doing that for about nine months before I got licensed. And now I'm just a solo agent going out on my own and, uh, really enjoying it so far. It's been, it's been wild. I mean, this market's insane. And so yeah. right now it's been, it's been a really exciting and fun time to, to jump into the industry. That's awesome. So let's get, let's, let's go deep farther into that before we get too much farther into anything else, but like that, the social media stuff. So you were doing social media stuff for them and then you were probably like, Oh wait, I could do this for myself. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, I learned a lot too. I mean, over the, the course of that, those nine months, I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity. Oh, I'm sure. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I just fell in love with, um, just with real estate. So it's actually kind of funny how kind of things transpired, but you know, last year, 2020 was a really hard year for a lot of people. And for me in particular, um, I was working at a company for five years, corporate America. Right. And yep. I, um, ended up getting laid off. And I remember once that, once that happened, I was like devastated because I, I worked, you know, at this company for five years, had a lot of friends there, but, um, at the same time, on the flip side of that, I was actually really unhappy for a while. And once that happened, it was kind of like a blessing in the skies. Um, and then I remember my wife, she sat me down and she's like, so what do you want to do? Like, <laughs> now it's like a perfect opportunity for you to kind of like jump in at something that you're actually passionate about or, or really interested in. And I remember the first thing that came to my mind was real estate. And so from that, so from that realization, I, um, I reached out to a, like a big time agent here in West Michigan. And to this day, he's become a really, really dear friend of mine. And he kind of took me under his wing and, um, I got to go to, um, listings, um, open houses. Cause we actually had a couple open houses during COVID, like right when things kind of like, which you were able to have an open house. I kind of like was able to run point on that for him. Um, and then I did his social media as marketing, got to sit in on appointments, got to like learn so much about the industry that when it came time to me getting my license I was kind of like ready to roll and it was really cool it's such an awesome experience um but yeah I mean that's kind of how I got to this point I just kind of reached out to to an, an agent in the area and um he took me under his wing and to this day he's one of my dearest friends hey that's awesome it's it's awesome how that works out like that and then yeah. you got so much experience from that and now you're now you're able to do what you're doing so yeah that's sure. the way to do it I know for a lot of new people when they business um they don't necessarily have a mentor to go to. So the fact sure. that you did and you get to learn all of that before your first transaction is huge. And that's going to put you forward. Yeah. And like, like I said, like, I mean, I talked to him, he's like my, yeah, he is my mentor for sure. And mm -hmm. we go golfing occasionally and that we just like, he's really there for me to come to if I have any questions, him and his team are just awesome people. And it's, it was such a blessing that that happened the way that it did. Yeah. That came yeah. When you were studying to take your exam to get your license, what is yeah. one thing that maybe isn't talked about in the test or at all to get your license that you now have realized like, okay, that would have been helpful to be on there? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. It's so funny because when I took that exam, I just remember for, I mean, it was a tough exam too. I feel like, I feel like the, like the 40 hour class you have to sign up for, whether it's in person or I did mine online. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the material that you even studied, like I haven't, I feel like I haven't used much of it yeah. since being on the other side, you know, and actually um, doing this thing. Um, but I thought that was like the funniest part. It was kind of deceiving. I mean, I signed up for so many like, side courses like I took my my class right and then I also signed up for some additional websites I was able to get more study material and I, it was just so funny that I feel like they put so much pressure on you with all this material that's going to be on the exam which you, you take right you have to you have to know it but once you're on the other side right once you're so living funny. it in reality yeah, yeah it's just like wow like 
they put so much emphasis on certain things and I, I mean, there are a handful of things I just haven't even used. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's like that with like a lot of standardized oh, yeah. stuff. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah. But for sure. So I yeah. think I got kind of sidetracked. What was your question? I was just asking you. <laughs> yeah. No, you answered it. You're good. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, yeah. I feel like I, I wasn't sure if I answered your question or not. Yeah. No, you did. You're good. I know a lot of people, um, they say the same thing about the test. And like when you get into actually going through the transactions where it's like completely different. You're like, well, this is not what was going on in the exam, but yeah. Right, and, so, I'll, and I'll say the exam was a lot harder than I expected to. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, the questions are written in a way where every like A, B, C, D, and E, everything could be the right answer. I don't know, like th- that was from my experience. It just felt like everything, every answer was the right answer. So you had to pick the best, the best one, and that was challenging. Yeah. It was a challenging thing to overcome. Take us to your first transaction. How did that go for you? Yeah, the first one, solo. Yeah, the first one, solo. Oh, so awesome. So (laughs) it was was so cool. So um, it was actually an off-market listing. So I sent out an email to my company. I work for Keller Williams of uh, Grand Rapids. And um, I uh, sent out an email to our office. And I said, hey, new agent, would love to put my first deal together. Does anybody have anything coming up? Here's the price range. Here's the amount of bedrooms, bathrooms we're looking for. And there's this, uh, an agent in my office. She ended up emailing me. She's like, Hey, like I have this coming up. Um, I'd be happy to have you walk through it before you list it. And I said, Oh, sweet. I sent it to my, my clients and, uh, they're like, yeah, sure. Why not? Like we've been, we were striking out on a few houses before this. I mean, mm-hmm. gosh, we probably wrote th- three offers before it was pretty, pretty, um, it's pretty early on in the process with these clients and we ended up walking through the house and little did we know we did not get i was not informed of this but the whole house was like completely updated it was like hgtv it was so cute oh, nice. and on the inside mm-hmm. and from the pictures from the last listing on the mls was like you know, I mean, we weren't that impressive but we walked through it and we're and my clients were just in awe and so it was kind of like the million dollar listing where you call the agent, and you're like, Hey, here's my offer. And then we kind of went back and forth. And then, um, all of a sudden, uh, before you know it, like we were under contract just like that. It was, it was so easy. And I wish every deal was like that, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Every deal was, it could just come together that seamlessly. But, um, yeah, that was my first deal and it was so awesome. It was, and once you get that first deal under contract, it's like an adrenaline rush and it's just like, Oh my gosh, I want more of it. You know, you're like, I got yeah. this now. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. it was it was it was so fun. And then it, I mean, and then fast forward to being at the closing table. The closing table is a pretty cool place to be, too. So uh, is it nerve wracking? I, like I like hanging out there. Yeah, especially <laughs> like in five minutes, I have my check. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> just kidding, but we're not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I so know fun. that you have mentioned that you guys were pleasantly surprised going through and seeing all the finishing touches on the home for your first transaction. Yeah. I'm sure you have seen plenty of homes that you are not pleasantly surprised by showings. Sure. What is the worst one? Do you think, you know, I've been through a lot of really terrible homes throughout my career so far, but there's one, one um, house in particular stands out to me where, and that this is really common in Europe, I hear, but I was walking through the house and we, and my client and I, we got to the kitchen and there was a washer and dryer in the kitchen that made it look like they were actually part of the kitchen appliances. And I've never seen that before. And I just thought that was the weirdest thing ever. But evidently, um, after talking to some people that I know in the industry, they're like, yeah, it's pretty normal in Europe, but I've never seen it here in you right. know, West of all places. So that yeah. was like kind of weird. Um, like next to the dishwasher? Like yeah, you like, they literally dryer, looked dishwasher. like they were, yeah, it was like part of the kitchen. Like it looks like okay. they were, it was just bizarre. Like they had like the, like the, like the countertops on top of like the washer and dryers because mm-hmm. you, you, you open them from this way, not from right. over. It's so funny. So <laughs> that's probably my answer for sure. That was the most bizarre thing I've seen so far. Yeah. Awesome. How did your second transaction go? Your first one went good. How did your second one go? That was a little bit of a, of a nightmare. Um, there was a lot maybe nightmare is a harsh word, but there, I probably walked through, gosh, 40 houses 
uh, with this okay. client. We, we throw it on several of the houses. We were getting really discouraged because, I mean, as you guys probably know, the market's crazy. Yeah. Especially yep. When- yep crazy all over the country but in west michigan in grand rapids especially it's just unbelievable and so it was um funny the cool thing was so we actually our initial offer was um re- was rejected and so it went under contract with somebody else and then i get a phone call from the listing agent a couple days later saying hey our deal fell through and i know from prior conversations that you've had with me your client was really interested in this house and you were top runner um for this property is this something you're still interested in so i was ecstatic i was like oh my gosh yeah Yeah, of course like yes (laughs) (laughs) of course so i called my client and um she was kind of hesitant at first because she was like you know um you know they rejected our offer the first time maybe it just wasn't meant to be and i was like yeah in this market this climate you got to kind of like take what you can get at this point you know like the fact that they're calling us back is a huge deal yeah mm-hmm. talked her into it and then we ended up um going back to the listing agent um and we and we didn't stick to our original offer we actually kind of we reduced our our terms and our price and whatnot and they ended up going for it which huh. was awesome. oh nice yeah yeah um so that worked out so my client was able to save money and we were able to get it kind of locked up but i mean just that entire process was just really stressful um yeah it's an emotional and, roller coaster for your client i'm sure it is it really and is. then I mean, yeah for sure i mean we like i said we were walk we've probably walked through 40 houses at that point mm-hmm. and we offered on probably 12 and yeah. we were just ready to land something and she was she had a deadline too she had to be out of her apartment i mean out of her yeah out of her current situation um by a certain time so like we were we really needed to find something and this house actually ended up being like a dream house for her too and it was in like her perfect little neighborhood as well and it just really worked out really really beautifully that's That's awesome awesome. yeah did you know when you first signed on to being a real estate agent that you might also have to do the therapy side of it (laughs) did you have any idea (laughs) pretty funny you say that no i didn't actually um it kind of came as a shock a little bit, you know. I kind of yeah. I saw some of it uh, last year when I was when I was working for um, my buddy that's in the industry, the big agent in West Michigan. Mm-hmm. I saw some of it. It's, I was I was able to listen in on some of the phone calls. But like when once I actually you know stepped into those shoes and started doing this for a living, once I started having phone calls where my clients cry to me on the phone, and I'm like, wow, right? okay, <laughs> you know, like. And I'm a very compassionate, caring for, I love people, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, I love people, love helping people, I like being a, a good person for other people. And so like, I, I, I was trying to be compassionate and help, you know, them through those emotions, but it's tough, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely, it was definitely a surprise for sure. But I kind of yeah. felt like buying a piece of real estate is such an emotional, such an emotional, you know, purchase and process. I mean, I kind of expected it. But I yeah. didn't expect it to be it literally right out the gates. Like, yeah. like that. You know what yeah. I mean? You're like, yep. oh my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, especially in this market too, when things are going so fast and getting rejected left and right. And sometimes that dream home sells before you even get the chance to walk through it. So Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy too. And like um, we use this app called Showing Time where you can schedule all your showings. And honestly, what's the house list? If you're not on showing time right away to go try to book a book a showing i mean yeah. the showing i mean the availability fills up like so fast mm-hmm. so yeah. i mean that was even kind of hard to work through it's like okay well you can't you know you can't see it this day the first available is literally the morning of the offer deadline so it's, it's, it, you know what i mean i mean yeah. it, it, i mean there was some hurdles we had to we had to jump over for sure yeah, yeah. and that would turn around make it difficult for you i mean if you're showing the deadline day, then you have to hurry up and get the offer written up if they want to go forward with it. Yeah. I mean, you had to move really quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's crazy. So yeah. I know you had, you had a really kind of awesome way to start into it, but is there anything you would change if you had to start uh, over today, knowing all, you know, you know, I, I don't know if I really would change much. I really thought, you know, reaching out to an agent in, in the area and kind of learning in my opinion, learning from the best out there I felt like that was such a huge that was like I was I'm so grateful for that I did that and then I had mm-hmm. that opportunity to do that because I learned so much and I got to see behind the scenes before I was even licensed you know I got to 
all those things that people that you don't learn in the class, I got to do beforehand. Yeah. And that was like super beneficial for me. And it really helped catapult my career. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would change like much. I mean, maybe I would want to put some more money towards like marketing um, efforts, you know, um, get like a really cool video made just like to kind of, promote the brand and to kind of get it out there and to kind of let people know like hey this is like my name's david this is what i do for a living i'm passionate about what i do i love what i get to do um so like i guess because i haven't i haven't done one of those yet and i feel like I've, it's on my to-do list i just haven't yeah. Out of time. yeah yeah kind of finishing up the rest of this year and going into the next year do you have any goals you want to accomplish yeah i would love i would love to um double the sales that i've made this year so far um that'd be i mean i feel like it's, it's kind of a cliche answer but i mean i would love to kind of double at least mm-hmm. increase the amount of volume i'm doing for next yeah. year um i'm also in the process of getting licensed in florida as well oh, i have some cool. family down there and um looks like a really fun industry or a, a market to tap into down there with some of the people i already know and um so that's a, that's one of my goals is to get more license and um running up and running down there um in the winter months maybe oh yeah <laughs> that'll be exciting <laughs> yeah, yeah so um so that's kind of those are some goals of mine for sure um leading into next year i would love to double what i'm doing up here and then kind of expand if you want to call it that down in florida and just kind of see what can happen you know mm-hmm. I, i'm focusing primarily on west michigan but it's it's inexpensive to hold my license down there so like why not that's why right. you know yeah continue and, to grow yeah and especially being i mean michigan you know how winters are and you probably oh, know sure. a lot of people or if not yet you will soon who want to move down there in winter Absolutely. so well, it's, it's, oh yeah. yeah you know it just kind of makes sense yeah and it's inexpensive to get the license and to hold the license down there. So I Might thought, well go you know, for it. It's a great opportunity to go for it and see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Do you have any business books that you've read that you could recommend to anybody? Yes. Um, so I read this book. It's by uh, actually a big time realtor in New York City. His name is Ryan Sirhant. He wrote oh, yeah. a book called Sell It Like Sirhant. And it's a sales book. And it completely... I mean, change my perspective on sales and the way, he, the way the book's written and the advice that he gives in that book, like it really kind of helped me in how to market myself and how to brand myself and how to, how to really kind of move the needle forward in this kind of career uh, to be successful. And like, I recommend that book to anybody um, that's looking for a good read. It's a first and foremost, it's a great read and the, and yeah. the way that it's written is really fun and, you know, reading something, that, that makes a difference for me. You got to gotta have some personality to it. There's a mm-hmm. lot of personality in the book, which makes it really fun. It's a really quick read. And um, that book for me, I mean, it helped me in my career so far. So I would recommend that book for sure. Awesome. I like it. How can uh, how can people get a hold of you? Um, you can reach out to me. Uh, primarily, I don't have a website uh, built yet, but like I'm really active on my Instagram. So my handle is at David Seacal. D A V I D S E E K E L L. And then um, you can email me at David Seekel at KW.com or text, call, um, leave me a voicemail at my uh, cell number, which is 616 915 4632. Awesome. That's perfect. Uh, thanks for coming on and sharing your uh, story with us today. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. These working? There right. we go. Oh, there we go. I think they work. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we do? We got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. It might be there. It might be right there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.